Owner's equity is a difficult element of accounting to understand. It actually has a very simple definition. Owner's equity is the owner's residual interest in the assets of the firm after the deduction of liabilities. So residual basically means the difference or leftover part. So it is the leftover part of your assets once you have deducted liabilities. An easy way to understand is to use an example. Pretend you wanted a new iPhone that cost $800, but you've only got $600 in your bank account. To make up the difference, you go to your parents and you ask for $200 as a loan to buy the phone, but you have to repay it by the end of the year. So we look at our assets. That's the uh, resource we control as a result of past event and so on that we learned about when we defined assets. You've got an $800 phone. However, $200 of that has come from outside sources. You have an obligation to pay your parents $200. Well, the residual or leftover part is your owner's equity. That's called your residual interest. So your actual part of the asset that you own is $600. We can express this relationship in what's called the accounting equation, which we'll do a lot more of in Unit 2 when we do balance sheets. Um, assets must always equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So using our phone as an example, I've got an $800 phone, and that was equal to $200 of liabilities, the loan to mum and dad and $600 of owner's equity. It can also be expressed another way. We can rearrange it so owner's equity equals assets less liabilities. So using the phone again, we had owner's equity of 600, which was equal to assets of 800 less liabilities of 200. Um, it also implies, applies the accounting equation in your personal life. So at some point you'll hopefully buy a house. Let's say it's worth $500,000. You've saved up a 20% deposit, which is 100,000, and you need to borrow the remaining 400,000. So the actual part you own of the house, that's your owner's equity. That's $100,000. How much does the bank own? Well, that would be your liability, which is $400,000. So expressing that in the accounting equation, we had a $500,000 asset, $400,000 liability, and $100,000 of owner's equity. A very common sort of situation for most people buying their home in terms of 20% deposit for a $500,000 house. However, the accounting equation will change over time. So let's pretend a year later you pay off $50,000 from the loan. Your house is still worth $500,000, but you own the bank $350,000. So you can see on the right-hand side of our equation, it doesn't equal $500,000 now. We've got $350,000 plus $100,000. So what happens is as you pay back the bank, that actually increases your equity. So now you can see your equity is 150,000 and our accounting equation balances. Let's pretend another year goes by and you pay off another $70,000 from the loan. The value of the property again doesn't change. However, you don't owe the bank $350,000, you owe the bank $280,000. Subsequently, your owner's equity or capital actually goes up to 220. So you can see the relationship is liabilities will go down as these debts are paid off and that'll therefore increase your owner's equity. Let's use an example where asset values do change, which is more uh, realistic. And let's say you bought $200,000 of shares in JB Hi-Fi. You used a $150,000 loan and $50,000 of your own money. So you've got $200,000 of assets. Your liabilities are $150,000 and your owner's equity is $50,000. Well, in the real world, things go up and down in value. Let's pretend your shares went up to $250,000 in value. So your asset has gone up to $250,000. You still owe $150,000 to the bank, assuming you haven't paid any back. So what happens is your owner's equity will actually increase here. That's your profits. What we'll learn is that revenue and profits increase owner's equity. Using another example, how do business and people go broke? Well, essentially they end up with negative owner's, owner's equity. So using an example, if I had a $100,000 asset but owed $110,000, I'd actually have negative owner's equity. And fundamentally, that is how you go broke. If your assets are less than your liabilities, that fundamentally means you are broke and bankrupt. So going back to our house example, let's pretend it's a $900,000 house with an $800,000 loan and $100,000 of cash. We saw during the GFC the value of properties around the world decreased. What if it went down to $600,000? So your property has decreased in value. Well, the bank doesn't suddenly say only pay us back $600,000. They still ask for their eight hundred. dollars so now you're in a situation where you're paying back uh, the bank more than the property is actually worth. What does that mean? That means you have negative owner's equity for $200,000. And essentially, that's how you would end up being broke.